Welcome back to another episode of the Sit Down Talk. My name is Keir. And I'm Noemi. And we welcome you. Clap it up for you for being here today. Yes, sir. Hi, guys. Life has been crazy. Mm -hmm. Schedules have been crazy. And family is always a priority for us. Mm -hmm. So the Sit Down Talk has not been getting the love it so desperately deserves. But we are very, very glad to be able to carve out enough time to sit down. Absolutely. And share and share a moment with y'all. So thank y'all for y'all patience and thank y'all for sticking with us and thank us for not jumping off of a bridge because man, <sighs> life hasn't been so much that it's crazy. Life is life, and all the stuff that we have to do is crazy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> life is just life in. <laughs> and we just we're life not life, eh? life is life eh? and we're just not the best managers of our time with a lot of the changes that's been going on if you've been watching us for a while you know that Kier's doing this full time and I am still you know working in the corporate sector we still have E at home yeah. like schools aren't open the fact that we're even able to do this is wild um, and the fact that I don't have an attitude right now is just God I sat in on a, a talk by Dr. Pooja Lakshmi, and she is brilliant. She was talking about burnout. And one thing she said about burnout is that she doesn't... You got something in your nose. Can I get it? Mm -hmm. All right. One thing she said about burnout is that she doesn't like it because it suggests that the problem is your lack of energy. Mm -hmm. When in all actuality, she said the systems that are designed to keep you intact have failed. Mm -hmm. The medical system mm -hmm. has failed. Uh, the education system has failed. Child care has failed. Of course, due to like ridiculous circumstances, but nonetheless, you're not burnt out because you can't muster up enough energy. You're burnt out because the systems that are in place to keep you sustained and to keep your family sustained have failed. And yeah. everybody, we butt naked out here on our own now. <laughs> but booty ass Booty naked. cheeks <laughs> blowing in the breeze, feeling crazy. Yeah, that's you, a great way to think about it. It's a great perspective. Mm -hmm. It's a good reframe. And it's, it's it's, it's helped me and our relationship is mad and balanced now because where we both had the typical nine to five now my job is different where i thought i would have more time and i thought you did too mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thought okay i quit the nine to five i'll have more time and this job is much more demanding mm -hmm. than my previous job i lie you know the sit down talk being posted once every every fortnight <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah we were doing it every week at some yeah. point but it's just between your schedule and and my schedule and booby being a three uh, a three major going on a four nato um, <laughs> don't call that don't say four nato what a lie i mean she not four yet i don't know what it's gonna look like when she a three major now she's approaching you know tropical I'm just hoping tropical storm wake booby up and be my sweet baby again oh no because this person is unrecognizable but yeah, going back to your point. <laughs> We're about to go on the parenthood. I know. Uh, Let's just go back, stay hole. back to the point. With you not having a corporate job anymore, there aren't the 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 lines and the terms aren't as defined mm -hmm. as they would be at your at your other job. Whatever you got to, you know, between the hours of nine and five was what you got to, and you didn't you didn't often go beyond like that that time frame. And I feel like with this. You know, you could be working at 7 a.m. or you could be working at 2 a.m. It's, it's, it's no talent. There's no, there are no boundaries yet because it's the beginning. And I feel like in any business, whether you're doing social media or something outside of that, like the first couple of years mm -hmm. is really just you trying to figure out what is this going to look like? What does, what does that time looks like? What does that effort look like? Um, and I think you're just in that space right now. And unfortunately... <laughs> life is also yeah. life thing. there's a lot of guilt involved and I try to keep it off me you do a good job of keeping it off me what guilt do you feel? just not man it's so spontaneous it could be Sunday afternoon and I can get an email it's like hey you know the brand said they love what you sent but they kind of want you to change four or five different things. And with video editing, it seems real small. Hey, you know this clip where you look to the left? Like, don't do that. And I'm like, all right, cool. And then when I go in to edit, I realize that that process is about to take me four and a half hours, even though it seems very small. Mm -hmm. And I'm like a, 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 a real dad. Like, That's <laughs> a real dad. I'm not, I don't just give lip service like, oh yeah, man, that's my baby. Like, nah, we, we, 
we share the the brunt of the of the parenting yeah. duties. Like we she, split everything. we split everything, and we pick up where the other person can't really take it any further. My job is the night routines, and I know we on limited time, so I'm gonna get to what we talking about today. But we shooting the shit, so let's shoot it. Yeah. Um, and I ain't talked to you all day. We've been working. We both been busy. Yeah. Like, but you know what though? I, but that's we can talk about that because it's it's really heavy on my heart. Like the time the commitment to our relationship to our roles as parents to our growth like it's i think it's related to right, what we want to talk about so go ahead let's, no nah, let's let's talk about it then because like there's always this thing in my head i have this reoccurring fear that you are going to come to me and do what Mandy Moore did to the dad on This Is Us. And it's like, hey, I feel like I'm raising these kids by myself. Yeah. I need you to get your head in the game. And I'm sure to him, to Jack at the time, if you don't watch This Is Us, perhaps you don't get this reference. Jack is the father. I don't remember Mandy Moore's character's name, but her real name is Mandy Moore. So that's what we <laughs> call her. Mandy. Yeah, that's that's Mandy. So Mandy and Jack, like she she was having a tough time with him because they weren't on the same page with parenting. And she's like, I'm giving this effort and I'm not getting help from you. And Jack mm -hmm. ain't feel that way at all. Because he grinding for his family. Right. He, he feel like he going hard and he doing what he need to do. And that's on my mind. And when I'm downstairs and I'm editing and I'm cussing and fussing because stuff ain't working, she's up here watching boo. Mm -hmm. And my daughter is high energy. My daughter is very intellectual and inquisitive, which means a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. She's very, uh, um, she's not as, uh, she's, she's attention seeking because she's a toddler, but she's very connection seeking. And she's the onlyest child. When I'm doing the editing and I'm, I'm doing all this, it's really time consuming. And I don't know what more I can do. Like anything I do outside of work is going to push into the parenthood. And anything I do that's involved in parenthood is going to push into the work thing. Like, I can't do and be both, and I'm still somebody's husband. Mm -hmm. So I still got to make time to kick mm -hmm. it with my girl. Mm -hmm. And um, it ain't enough hours in a day, and I feel bad. Like, how you going to quit your job and still not have enough time? Like, make it make sense. Okay. I, I probably wouldn't. My issue isn't so much like the, the parenthood Um Thing because like I know it's not always gonna be like this like if we were to have like another child <laughs> this won't be an issue anymore if anything it would be one of us with one child and the other one with another child that's so I don't look at I don't look at that's not something that that bothers me or even think about or maybe I don't even know it's, it's just not something that's top of my mind but one thing that is um not so much a concern because it's still in the beginning was I remember one time we were doing something and the ask of me was ridiculous. And I remember, you know, acknowledging that it was ridiculous and you were like, babe, I'm gonna make it up to you. As long as we have those moments where we get to make up, like it's marriage, it's a partnership. Like not only are we partners in marriage, we're also business partners. So I, I I, I'm coming into this knowing that that's going to be the case. What I don't want, and not to say that you're doing that, but this would be my concern, is that we don't get back to us. We don't get back to, you know what, Noemi pulled a whole bunch of stuff for this, so I'm going to do something special for her. Mm -hmm. Or like, here, like your birthday would just pass. I made sure to make, I made sure that we went somewhere and we did something. And as long as you make that effort to make up for things and to acknowledge that person it doesn't have to be every day but as long as you make that effort yeah. that's going to help yeah. but as far as like the day to day like it's not going to be fair because it, it's, it's an impossible it's not, not going to be fair yeah, it's an impossible I'm asked ask. to do a lot because I still have my, my 9 to 5 job I'm asked to do a lot but look at the benefits mm -hmm. the benefits are financial freedom the benefits are creative freedom the benefits are you know exposing our daughter to a life that we wouldn't be able to live had we not made this jump so that part I'm coming into this knowing that it's going to be hard and knowing that, you know, I'm going to have to stretch in ways that I didn't anticipate. I just want to make sure that the acknowledgments on both sides are um, continuous. Maybe yeah. not so much every day, yeah. but intentional. That's the word. The yeah. acknowledgment is intentional. It's, it's on my radar, so it's, it's a little easier to kind of grab it when, it when it pops up. But there's something, while I agree with you, there's something to be said for being frustrated and maybe tired and 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 just like an affect and an attitude when we don't want to do something. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm and, and, an and, and knowing and the thing <laughs> is when you have an attitude, 
Now I have an attitude, and that's something I've been working on. But we both feed off of each other's yeah. energy, yeah. so it's not as simple as well. I know that the the great benefit is out there of doing this. The fact still remains that you have to do it, and you don't want to, and there's going to be a struggle, or, or you're not you're not in a space to, because it happens to me all the time. I don't want to do half the things that I'm gonna do. You know, I don't want to do half the, half the shit that to? I want to do. But that's why that part doesn't. That's where Facts. we're different. What I feel like mean? tasks bother you, like to oh. the point where like your day is ruined. Absolutely, tasks don't bother me. Like I'm annoyed by them, but I can have an attitude with somebody. Like I don't even want to speak to you, and then 20 minutes later, be over it because it's very specific to that thing. Mm -hmm. Like. I don't, I didn't want to do this, this sit down talk, not because I don't want to talk to y'all, but it's because today is a busy day at work yeah. and I'm like, dang. And then we forgot about something else that we got to do. Later. And I'm literally going to a funeral exactly. after this. Yeah. And I, he usually picks up Emery after school and now I got to pick her up on top of the stuff that I got to do at work, on top of the stuff that I have to do at home. And it's just like, dang, like we planned this out perfectly yesterday. I blocked out my calendar, thought everything was good, but nice. just acknowledging that there's always going to be a wrench thrown in the plan. Mm -hmm. Nothing has ever gone, anything that requires the both of us or the three of us, nothing has ever gone according to my plan. Not even which just leaving to go to the grocery nothing, store. Nothing. It's just, I'm I'm just in it. I'm just here for the WTF. I don't know what the heck is about to happen. But that's why I can't let that bother me because if it were, I would have ran away from y'all a long time ago. And if I sit in that emotion, if I sit in that, I don't know what's going on, I'm going to be miserable. So this is more self-preservation than it is anybody else. Because if I don't, all I can control is how I feel. Well, all I can control is how I act on how I feel. Mm -hmm. I can control how I feel. But yeah, I'm going to have an attitude. Does that attitude mean that I'm going to be mean? Does it mean I'm not going to engage? Does it mean I'm going to say, you know what? F it. I'm not going to do that. That's not fruitful. Mm -hmm. But I can, I can at least say, hey, babe, I just want you to know I'm pissed off at this. But I'm going to do it. But just know that, like, don't be smiling in my face right now because I don't feel like smiling. <laughs> Ain't gonna be no, oh, yuck, oh, yuck, yeah, yuck. But yeah. I'm gonna do it, you know, and I love you. I just, I'm not in the mood right now. And I think when you get into those moments, I just acknowledge it and I try to move away. I ask, hey, did I do it? Is it my fault? Oh, it's not me? Okay, cool. <laughs> and then you just let the person feel without internalizing it all the time. Given everything that's happened in the last two weeks, um, you know, the nosies out there that like to read in between lines that don't exist. Can you please reassure everyone that you're not being held against your will? I am to not being held talk? against my will. I'm not being held against my will. I can see me will. on the blog site right now. Okay, did you let me see clarify. what he did to his wife? Let me, let me she clarify. Looked trapped. Like, the grind isn't cute. Like, the grind isn't cute, but I'm here for the grind because I love the life that I live. Come on now. Like, I love, like, listen. I, listen, I'm just complaining, y'all. Like, I'm just, I'm just shooting the shit. But like, I genuinely love this. I genuinely like love the platform that we've created. All I'm saying is, it is team too much. We <laughs> talking about all the things. We are black love. We are black family. We are black intellectuals. We are mental health. We are women's empowerment. We are support black men. It's a lot of initiatives under Kier Gaines, Noemi Gaines, the Gaines family. Then we got Booby, who's like a blossoming content creator. <laughs> Facts. It's, it's honestly like a lot. They can't hear it. I remember the last talk. I was like, man, y'all heard that UPS truck? And oh it was like gosh. eight comments. They can't um, hear it. But yeah, I just say this all to say, like, I'm here because... Damn, what, the Germans coming? That's scary. <laughs> God damn. People always say that if you do something you love, then you never really have a day at work. That's not true. And that is a lie. Who said that? <laughs> Everybody. Who said that? Can y'all look it up? The first time somebody said that, I was like, yeah, man, I'm going to do what I love. It ain't going to feel like work. It no. always, work is work. No, work is work. Work is so work that even when it don't mean to be work, you're still working. Yeah. I don't like that. I don't like that. Work, work is work. Certain work is easier than others because we enjoy the type of work. So, like, moving forward, as far as, like, workload, you going to have tasks. So, how are you going to handle that? Mm. I can tell you mine. Yeah, please, because I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to complain about it, but when it's go time, it's go time. Like, give oh, myself the yeah, opportunity. No, I'm no. talking about me specifically. Yeah. I don't complain. So, like, giving myself the opportunity to, like, really, like, complain about it in the moment, but then do it when I have to and then let it go. 
And I think the issue is the holding on to the annoyance of something when it's no long when there's no longer anything you can do. That about goes it. back to that holding on thing. I I'm, I'm not holding on on purpose. I literally I'm annoyed. Like being annoyed to you is like a minor inconvenience. It is being annoyed to me is like being punched in the face. Yeah. It's it's so egregious to me. Like why would you annoy me? <laughs> People aren't doing it on purpose. Intent don't have nothing to do with the way I internalize it. Oh man. I'm just saying. My biggest thing is whenever like we complain about something to to offer some some, some type, type of, of guidance. Yeah. So if you are that person where like life circumstances or just things annoy you and like you said it feels like it punches you in the face, how do you get over that or mm -hmm. don't you? Or yeah. do, do you not? Well, me the way I get over is looking at the bigger picture mm -hmm. and trying to remember that the way I feel is just a moment. Like mm -hmm. it's like grief or anxiety or anger or fear. It it swells and then it falls. And what I learned is if I can hold on through the swell part and I don't do anything to like I don't make any actions that that alter my life after I'm not upset anymore, mm -hmm. I'm Gucci. But if I act on that and then I do something or I say something that I don't mean, or I neglect the work responsibility that I probably should have paid more attention to because I was in my bag, I'm going to be angry at myself later. Mm -hmm. And I always got to ask, what's what's bigger now? Being angry at yourself, or just being angry at this thing in the moment and letting it subside, or being angry at this thing in the moment and then knowing you're going to have to be angry at yourself later because mm -hmm. you done said or did some dumb shit. And uh, This is the perfect segue. <laughs> oh, I, I created that. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, mm -hmm. hey, hey, mm -hmm. hey, 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 <laughs> hey. Yeah. But anyway, like like you were saying about how we respond to things that you know annoy us or things that are out of out of our control. Mm -hmm. What we intended on talking to you guys about is about like conflict within a relationship, and the reason why it was a perfect segue because you were saying how um, essentially how you have to be mindful of the way that you say things and the way that you feel when you don't have control over it and the intent behind the feeling. So um, thinking about conflict, like our argument, oh, the original... I'm so avoidant. I am. You are. I'm conflict avoidant. And, and, and... You would never think that, though. No, you wouldn't. Because if I really have to, I will. But conflict doesn't feel good to me. And I'm human, and we avoid the things that don't feel good. Like, please don't get me wrong. If you try me, I will. I, <laughs> don't I will, try him. I will respond. Like, and please don't. And I'm confrontational, don't. but like, I've let people try me. He is not confrontational and he reserves his confrontation do for it. those moments. Please don't. Yeah. I know somebody gonna try me on social media one day. I don't think they will. Don't do it, man. I don't I don't think they will to the point where you have to respond. Don't like do our it. family online will shut it down. Oh, yeah. Shut it completely yeah, our, down. Our audience, uh, they like white blood cells. <laughs> we don't even have to get... It'll be like three days later. It'll be like, oh, that was beef? Oh, it's already handled. It's been times when someone has said something in the comments, and I'm like, bro, I'm going to delete it and save you from the people who are going to respond <laughs> and make you feel terrible horrible. about yourself. Horrible, horrible. Um, but yeah, I am conflict avoided. And, 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 and not in every area of my life. Look, now, now I'm trying to defend it. I think most That's people why. would. I think most people would. So, like, my... Let me hop on my soapbox real quick. Get on now. I... I personally do not think that I'm confrontational, but I've been called confrontational. And I think that lies in this belief that confrontation or conflict or arguing is mm -hmm. a bad thing. I wasn't... I can only speak for myself. I was raised by a woman that is very opinionated. Listen. <laughs> my mama... <laughs> my mother... Like, I do not envy the person who has beef with my mom because my mom is quick, my mom is witty, my mom, like, she's like this all the time. And um, she has, and I hate to, the word aggressive to explain black women, but she's been told that she's aggressive. Mm -hmm. And, like, knowing her and growing up with her, like, I never saw that as a bad thing. I saw it as, like, people have conflicts. Like, everyone has to have conflict at some point. And that, like helps me practice what it's like to have conflict. My mom and I disagree on a lot of things. And I think other people will look at us and think that we're arguing or think that we're fighting. It's like, nah, we just disagree. Mm. And we just, you know, we feel strongly about our stances on the, on the position. And I feel like in general, because people see that I am not afraid to disagree, not afraid to argue, not afraid to have, you know, a difference of opinion that it comes off as confrontational. I just don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's so 
human Mm -hmm. that somehow society, women specifically, I can't speak for men, but somehow society made it seem like you're disagreeable if you disagree. Like, those are two totally different Yeah. Yeah, I I think people conflate that because sometimes I get it mixed up in my mind, disagreeing with me versus um, disliking me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and, and that's that's human, though. It is human. Mm -hmm. It's it's very human. You can just go on Twitter. (laughs) You'll see that if you speak against something that you disagree with, people who are for who are proponents of that thing or that idea will think that you're attacking it just because you disagree with it and my brain works like that sometimes where i can't tell the difference between you disagreeing with something because you're trying to minimize the way i think or feel about it or you disagreeing with something just because you see things differently yeah and of course like you, it's no way you could be a functioning adult, functioning adult, and not have any type of control over that. But there are times I might not act on it. You may never know, but internally, that's what I'm going through, and I know I'm not the only one. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For sure. I think I honestly think that your perspective on things is more common than mine. Like, keep in mind, I, I grew up with a mother that like we we're very different, and we've disagreed on a lot of things throughout the course of my like childhood and adulthood Mm -hmm. so internally i don't have that conflict oh you know what now that i think about it in my house even though my mom was real hippy dippy free flowing like we were just that kind of kind of family there wasn't really room to disagree that was an authoritarian thing what i say in a number especially rules of the house the way things should go it was authoritarian like there was no disagreement like it's children are to be seen and Mm. not heard can I ask a clarifying question? Yeah. Only because I'm not familiar with that yeah, dynamic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, was it an issue to just talk about this, the disagreement? Or, like, you couldn't talk about it and you had to listen? And the reason why I asked before you answer is because, like, my mom still, whatever she said, <laughs> went. But she allowed, my mom used to do this all the time. And it, it actually pissed me off as a kid. She would allow me to disagree with her. And she's like, okay, that was a great argument. But I said what I said. So it's like I practiced arguments, but it didn't change anything. It's so much about my childhood that I don't remember. I'm starting to believe that maybe I internalized it a different way. Like maybe you were like, oh, well, you don't disagree with me. Well, all right, cool. Well, I got my piece off. Mine is, my thinking is always, well, if what I'm going to say isn't going to have any type of bearing on the outcome and you're just listening to me talk for the sake of me talking, Mm -hmm. then what the hell is the point of me talking? Mm -hmm. And that was the point. Like my mom could not be wrong even when she was. So mm-hmm. it's just, it's, it's, it's tough. We sound like we're saying kind of yeah, the same thing the same in two way. different ways. My mom's the same. My mom didn't care whether I <laughs> agreed or disagreed. Uh, doesn't. <laughs> she, she doesn't. No, my mom cares now. I mean, she's still going to do what she does, but she cares more now. And I think a lot of it is just like, she trusts, like, it was like a training for her. Like, it wasn't just a like, like this is what I decided you're going to do. She also wanted me to learn how to stand up for myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, but I'm also raised by a Haitian woman. So that only, (laughs) that only matters to a certain extent, but it was very important for her to know that I knew how to defend myself and to speak up for myself and to speak up for what I believed in. But she taught me specifically that you can, you can talk until you're blue in the face. Someone can still say no, but that doesn't, that, that shouldn't, that shouldn't um, that shouldn't make you feel like that. Your make you feel like your voice doesn't matter. Holy hell, yo! You be having me on discoveries. Really? I just realized, yeah, nobody really ever taught me to stand up for myself. I learned mm-hmm. to stand up for myself from like being a new kid in the neighborhood in the projects, and the kids would beat your ass. Mm-hmm. And after a while, you're like, oh, that's my last ass whooping. Mm-hmm. I'm about to start whooping the ass back. So. To me, the way that I've learned to solve a lot of my my problems or a lot of my conflict is with my hands. Mm, and that doesn't... And not with your words. Yeah. And if you solve them with the hands, by the time you're comfortable trying to figure out that conflict, you're already mad enough to not give a damn about what the consequences are. Mm-hmm. So now... The, the time when I'm most, like, where I'm least conflict avoidant is when I'm already upset. Yep. If I'm mad, I've already given myself permission to say whatever I need to say to you mm-hmm. and not really worry about the repercussions that are going to come afterwards. Like, I have my justification. Mm-hmm. If I'm not that mad, then I'm probably going to feel bad on the back end. Because when I explode on people, like, I explode. It's, yep. no, it's no middle button. Mm-hmm. 
damn, that's so wild. And I think a lot of people can relate to that. And I can even relate to that in some right. aspects. I just, the, the, I don't see you like the, that. The way that I problem solve in that way with my relationships and with people that I really care about is different. Mm-hmm. I also know my tongue and I know my tongue can cut people. So it's like, I, you're not worth that. If it's, I know this sounds horrible, but I know we've all been through it when like you just went off on somebody and you didn't really care. <laughs> like you didn't care what the outcome was. Yeah. Like you said what I said and I'm out. Yeah. You know, and I, I've definitely had those moments before, but I'm really um, conscious. Whoa. You okay? Yeah. <laughs> um, if y'all, y'all couldn't see that, those of y'all who are listening and not watching, <laughs> but I almost dropped this damn microphone. My bad, um, y'all. But what I was basically saying is like, I'm really conscious of not doing that to the people that I love. Yeah. The bad thing is, once I don't care about you anymore, I genuinely don't care about your reaction to it. And I think that's something that I need to work. Like, it's not just the people who I love who deserve love back. But oh, that's an internal thing that I'm working. But is that's that? See, I don't know about that. I, that's not love to me. Like, I, you, the way you go about. Camera weed. <laughs> Oh man, you f-ing kidding me? The camera just overheated. We shoot in 4K, and when you shoot in 4K, sometimes it just that—that's what happens with these cameras. When we last talked to y'all, it was four o'clock, like four fifteen, when the camera cut off. Yeah, it was like yeah, it was before four fifteen. It is now ten minutes before ten p.m. <laughs> A whole day has passed. Yeah, by. man, it's been crazy. <laughs> So I've actually like washed my face, take my tuck my makeup off, took a shower. We're in our robes. I mean, we usually be in the robes anyway. Nah, that's like our yeah. go-to. Like mm-hmm. you know we're what in I'm our saying? robes all day, but just to kind of symbolize that, you know, it's the end of the day, but we committed to it, and we had we were having a really good conversation too. I don't know what we're talking about, but that funeral. Um, I went to my cousin's funeral. Yeah. Uh, he was in his 80s. He passed away from Alzheimer's and dementia. I was just thinking, man, just sitting at that funeral, and it was a beautiful service. But, like, that was it. Mm. Mm-hmm. That was it. And there's a casket there, and everyone who he left behind is staring at the casket, but when they go home, he's no more. Mm-hmm. And it hit me that, like, at some point, Like, that's going to be all of our story. Mm -hmm. And whatever final remarks people have of you, it's going to be whatever positive experiences they had with you while they knew you. They're going to tell little anecdotal stories. Stuff probably you don't even know they remember. Mm -hmm. And and, And thinking about the conversation we had before that and how tired and how stressed we are. And it's like, damn, sometimes life really be moving and I feel like I don't hit the record button. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And it's like, man, like that, that, that's going to be me. My days are going to be over at some point. Like, am I really going to remember all these stressful days? Mm-hmm. Unless that's what killed you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're so consumed by the stress and the exhaustion and just the everyday wear and tear of life, just trying to survive. Like, what if you just letting life go by and you not hitting the record button? Mm-hmm. Cause when you in the casket, like the accolades don't go with you, man. Mm-hmm. It's just a reminder to live life to the fullest while you're at it now. Yeah. I mean, he also lived to be 80-something. Yeah. You know, that's a long, beautiful life. That's a long life. life. Mm-hmm. That is a long life. That's mm-hmm. many lives within one life. Mm-hmm. Just imagine the, how many lives that we've lived in our, what, 30-plus 30, 30 years? Yeah. Can you imagine that times mm-hmm. three? Mm-hmm. This is our first 30, then the next 30, then the next 30. And your first 30 is <laughs> trash because you spend the first 17 of it unable to do a damn thing. The first 30 is carried by, like... 27 to 30. That's when life really like <laughs> changes nah, in your I life. No, you you sleeping on 25. 20 24 is probably a, is pivotal of an age is 30. Yeah, maybe for a man. Mm, <laughs> Not for me. Okay. Yeah, maybe that. <laughs> Not for me. 
all right, maybe you got something white. Nah, why 20, would it? Because at 27, because, you know, I feel like growing up, I did, and I know a lot of women that were, like, 30 years old. Like, you want to have your kids by your 30, get married before 30. Like, you want everything to happen at 30. Mm, and then you checklist. hit 27, you like, I ain't got no process. Like, yeah. that is, that's not happening. Like, that's not, at this point, all of that, to oh, meet yeah. somebody, get married, and have children before 30 is not going to happen. Women, women have a different internal clock than we yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I, we but don't like, have that impression. during that period, like 27 to 30, I was like, oh, that's just some bullshit. Like, that don't mean nothing. 30's still young. <laughs> but before then, you're stressed. You're like, okay. Mm. I mean, maybe it's just a me thing, but... 30 was definitely that pivotal age where I was like, I, I'm, I'm going to have my stuff together by then. And then now at 30, almost 32, I'm like, you, you foolish girl. Yeah, the age. You didn't know the anything. The age accomplishment thing is, I don't know who created like this arbitrary benchmark. Like by this age, you should have these things in place. Because even if that was true 10 years ago, it ain't true now by the same no, standards. Absolutely. A two bedroom apartment don't even cost the same amount than it did two years than it did 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Houses are cheaper than rent now. Come on, man. Yeah, literally for mm -hmm. this house, we pay less in our mortgage than we paid for that two bedroom apartment mm -hmm. we used to shoot out of. Yep. Like significantly less mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How'd that work? Our mortgage and all of our bills are the exact same. Yeah. As an apartment where we shared a wall. With everybody. With a very, with a dog that had yeah. insomnia. We got to get back on track. We look at conflict different ways based on our upbringing. Mm -hmm. But it's 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 more than just like conflict, conflict based on our upbringing and how we like take that in. It's our individual personalities. Right. It's our genders, the way the world treats us, kind of molded our personalities in a lot of different ways. So to me, it's, it's, it's just like a hodgepodge of things that's going to dictate how you respond to conflict. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the internets, the socials, I feel like it's mad oversimplified. Like, well, if you're this type of person, then this is what you should do with conflict. And when you give somebody the should and you don't give them the how, they just end up mm. with guilt. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. You ask people, ain't nobody conflict avoiding it. Nobody's going to admit that. Yeah, you're right. No one's going to admit that. <laughs> but me on this vlog. <laughs> I mean, if you hear, you know what it is. Yeah. Um, keeps it a bean. So what about like conflict in our relationship? I know that's something that we wanted to get to. Not sure if we did before <laughs> the nah, camera we... blew up. <laughs> um, I want to say in one of our past posts, somebody said, oh, Kier, like you're so good at communicating, I bet you don't argue at all oh, with yeah, your I wife. Oh, yeah, I don't get into arguments. And so I was just like... Uh, Sir, <laughs> or ma'am, whoever you were, like, don't pause for the call. Come on, that that just yeah. pissed me off because I, I do think that, um, one, and I might have mentioned this before, but like, conflict to me is not an issue, it's not a bad thing in a relationship, it's just a way, it's kind of like a checkpoint, like, hey, there's some communication things that need to be, you know, worked out, work them out, and keep going, but like. Conflict to me and our ability to overcome that conflict or work through th through that conflict speak work through that conflict speaks to like the strength of our relationship and how we're growing. Like that's the way I've always looked at it. Of course, not in the moment, but when have we not leveled up after some type of argument? So speak to in the moment because a lot of people do talk about conflict and they talk about it after. Oh, so what it actually after, looks yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After the dust is settled a little bit. Like in the moment when you and I have conflict, talk about the scale. Like it, it, sometimes it's a one on a scale of one to ten. Sometimes it's a 15 yep. on a scale of one yeah. to ten. But, but you do feel something in that moment. Absolutely. What is that? my personal feeling yeah, in that moment, yeah. I feel, I feel like, I know disappointed isn't a big enough word, but that's what that comes down to because it's always, the cause of it is always a lack of communication. It's not, you know, we never have issues about disrespect or like infidelity. Like it's not, it's not those things. It's just like 
the way that hurtful things from either one of us can be said so quickly mm -hmm. is like a disappointment to like what we've worked so hard to do because like, we damn, know I, it was I, than I know that. and yeah. it's but it's like it's not like a blame thing but it's just like it's also concerning because if I say it, it's like damn I, I I, I got to a level of like hurt or disappointment or anger that I let that slip out. Mm -hmm. And that's where, like you said, we're better than that. And even when you do it, it's not so much like, oh my God, he disrespected me because I always lead with knowing that you love me. Mm -hmm. But it's just like, it's disappointing because it's like, damn, like he got to a point where we couldn't talk this out, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah. it's like, granted, this is a new place that I'm at, but like I'm at a place where like I, I never think that you're out to hurt me. That's never the first thought anymore because yeah they used you to know, be the it, predominant of course, thought of course yeah. but we 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 built that trust and we got to that point when that changed for you it's gradual like how i how how i feel right now isn't how i felt like six months ago mm -hmm. i think six months ago i still would have got i still would have gotten upset but after talking through it with you mm -hmm. and expressing that to you i would have felt better whereas now you say it and that's not even the first place that i go anymore do you think, no, I don't want to lead you to the answer, but I am curious, like, what's the difference? Like, what made, what made the difference between the way you react now versus the way you react, you reacted then? Is it something I'm doing? Is it something that you're doing? Is it something you're thinking? Is it experience? Like, I think it's experience. It? I think, like, I have more, like, every day is another opportunity to trust you in a different way, in a deeper way. Man, and the longer, poetic. the longer, like we've gone without, like I said, we've had communication issues, but we didn't, we haven't had disrespect, you know, like mm -hmm. type of issues. We haven't had, you know, those types of things that I don't think we could work through. Yeah. And um, it's like the more time that we go having productive conflict and productive arguments and or getting back to our shit quicker, mm -hmm. the the deeper it is that I trust you. And it's kind of funny because remember how you used to make fun of me? Because I'm the type of person, I trust everybody until you give me a reason not to trust you. Listen. But I recognize, no, I recognize now that there's a cap on that initial trust. Like, oh, let's yeah? say, yeah, because I trust you in a different way than I did when I met you. Oh, you're talking about there's a cap on me specifically? There's a cap on every individual person that I just meet. Gotcha. So everybody starts with a 20. You're at an 100 because you started at 20 and you built from that. Damn, but I don't give you more than that when I first meet you. And I think it comes across as maybe I'm naive. I'm like, I'm not dumb. Like, I know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I just I just like to lead my relationships and my interactions with people in that way. Mm -hmm. You know, but but going back to your original question, when you were like, what happened mm -hmm. in order for us to do that? I think it's also um, I think it's also like that choice. Like whenever I choose to think the positive, even in a negative situation, I always benefit from it. And I think, like, not to say, I don't know if that makes sense because you're giving me a confused nah, look right it, now. It, it does. <laughs> if I choose to believe that you are in, it, in this for my benefit, mm -hmm. I'm no longer, like, stirring in anger about a specific situation. Whereas if I take it as, like, damn, I can't believe he said that to me. Does he really feel that way? It's going to, I've been there. It's mm -hmm. going to drive me crazy. And it's just, like, that choice. It's, like, I don't have... Like, in one situation where I'm choosing to be angry, I don't have the evidence to say that you are always like this. Mm -hmm. And in the decision to choose that you are doing something positive, I have all the evidence in the world. Yeah. And that's where the choice, like, I can choose, I'm, I'm, I'm entitled to feel however way I feel, but I can choose what I want to do with that. Yeah. I know it's very yeah. like therapisty, but it's really the way that I think about it. But on the other side of that, I think it, it requires for you to have a partner who's, if they're not conscientious of that, they're becoming conscientious of that. So a partner that, mm -hmm. that does things to gain your trust that aren't like showboaty mm -hmm. or it's in the, and I think that happens through the conflict. Mm -hmm. When we have those arguments, sometimes you say things to me in frustration that you may not say if we're just having a mm, conversation. True, true. Or sometimes we both be frustrated about something. It's like, well, we need to talk about this. But it's like there's no comfortable insertion point when your relationship is bouncing and vibing and feeling stupendous. To be like, hey, you know that thing that pisses the both of us off that we have a problem with? Like, can we talk about that real mm -hmm. quick? It's not always a good break in that. So sometimes it only comes out during conflict. And that's... 
that's how I don't know about you, but that's how I learned. We had a conflict. We had a follow up conversation. You you explain the way you feel beyond whatever happened when we exploded in that moment. And I'm like, oh, all right. And so it's not that I don't think the conflict teaches me as much as the conversation after. Right. But you can't have a conversation Without after a conflict. unless you had a conflict. Yeah. And that makes me want to punch something in the face. You do not like conflict. You don't like anything that requires a discussion about something you did wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Who does, though? Like, humans spend their entire lives avoiding, like, that that level of accountability in some way, shape, or form. Because you don't like to be reminded that something that you didn't intentionally do mm-hmm. made someone feel bad or hurt somebody. So you avoid it. So how do you solve that conflict? If you're in a position where something that you do unintentionally hurt someone you don't know that you did it Mm -hmm. like you like let's say for that person that's in that position right now they find themselves in that position often Mm -hmm. how do you i hate i hate to say this because i can't stop hearing dismantling but how do you (laughs) clubhouse words man um how do you prevent yourself from like stirring in that type of feeling I, I want to be clear, stirring and what feeling exactly? That feeling is just like I'm messing up. I'm constantly getting into conflict in my relationship. Every time I try to fix it, I end up making it worse. Some people just don't have great situational awareness. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not contingent on whether they're single or in a relationship. They just, they, they don't, you know that one person that just can't read a room? Yeah. They can't read a room at work. They can't read a room at home. They're never going to be able to read a room that way. Just intrinsically, they don't have that skill. Um, so, of course, in their relationship, they may not have it. Even when they start to know a person really, really well, like you are who you are, and that's going to kick in. Mm-hmm. So I'm not, I'm not sure how you fix that problem. How I fix the problem um, <laughs> is by just sitting in my discomfort. And I'm becoming more comfortable. I know that if you sit and you make me feel bad, I'm going I'm going to feel like some trash. I'm mm-hmm. going to be down for like a day. Because I don't like feeling like I'm a bad yeah. husband. And yeah. I don't like feeling like I'm a bad partner. And I don't like not knowing stuff. Can we get super, super honest? I hate it when you get into that feeling. When like, you feel like you're a bad husband. And I feel like sometimes I'm afraid to tell you about things that I'm unhappy about that really aren't big deals. But, like, I don't want to see you sad. Mm-hmm. You know? And it could be, like, I don't know. What's something little? Like, like today I asked you for flowers, right? And if, like, a month later, I'm like, babe, I asked you for flowers last month. And, like, you'll be like, damn, babe, you're right. That's my bad. And, like, something so little, you will beat yourself up about it. And it it just kills me. (laughs) (laughs) It really does. And, like, that's just a testament to the type of husband he is. Like, he is serious when he says he doesn't like to feel like he's a bad husband. But I do feel like sometimes you're too hard on yourself. Yeah. I mean. And I think that's people. I think especially when you get married, like, because I feel like I up all the time like especially like in the marriage yeah I mean, you said yesterday you were like i'm a buzzkill like i just wasn't in the mood oh, like man. let me yes. tell you yesterday was like a really bad day and one of the things uh-huh. that like really frustrate me is like i don't like being touched all the time so if it's like a day where like everybody i need to hold eat all day and then he'll come into a room it'll be completely quiet he'll come into the room be like hey baby let me tell you what something that i did and then he'll come in the bed and like can i lay on you and it's like like, it's not that I don't, like, I'm trying to escape. <laughs> and everywhere I go, they find me. <laughs> and, like, it was really exciting news that he was sharing. But I just wasn't. I was just like, damn. I, every time I come into a room, I try to leave when it's, like, people there. And, like, I could have just said, babe, I just want to be by myself. But I felt bad at that moment because it's, like, that was, like, the third time you had tried to touch me. I'm like, okay, let me just push through because it's, like, a time too late to tell you that I don't want to be touched because yeah. you're going to think you did something. Yeah. See, that's, that's crazy. So that's feeling bad on top of feeling bad. Yeah. And like, I really didn't feel that bad when I you, when like you killed my buzz. I didn't feel that. I just had to let you know that you yeah. killed my buzz. Though. Like, I, like, I felt so bad. Like, like, damn. Like, but, it's, but it's cool because I understand. And, and, and that's the thing. Like I'm not, 
you don't always have to be excited when I'm excited. You don't always have to be interested in the things that I'm interested in. And I really enjoy being left alone. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> That's where me and him are like yeah, the same person. Like, like I get it. Because it'd be sometimes I'd be in the basement. And man, it's, it's, it's been a day and E has been for hours <laughs> on end, you know. And it's, I'm tired of people. And she's like, babe, can I just sit in the basement while you play video games? And I'm like, yeah, but I could I could say no, mm -hmm. but I don't because I'll feel bad. My feelings will be hurt. Yeah, <laughs> I'll so be like, okay. So it's a lot of us managing I know. one another's feelings, and Let's we don't always get that right. Because yeah. we're both at a point. I think we both admitted in our own way that like we assume positive intent in the relationship, and while that might sting the first couple of times, like I think we should normalize that. I, did I say I assume positive intent? I try to assume positive intent. Well, you said intent. our conflict helps you assume yeah. positive intent. So if we just like, I feel like we're at a point in our relationship where we can try that, and like I said, I think I think the first couple of times is gonna be a little. But I think it's More something crunchy. that we can, I think that's something we can work through because like we're both complaining about the same thing. We're afraid to ask our partner because it's for uncomfortable space. and it comes back to conflict. It might cause a conflict, yeah. but we can at least agree. We're not, we're not arguing right now. We can always ref reference back this conversation. It's something that we both need in the relationship. I do have to pause you because you're right. One belly, you right, but I, I gotta nah, not even however. I have to, yeah, however, actually, <laughs> it's, it's exactly however is what I mean. Oh, goodness. Um, I have to give us our flowers because we are so much better at even if it's uncomfortable in the moment, just being like, hey, like I feel you. Yo, y'all yo, have no like, idea. Like, please get oh. away from me. But I, uh, but but we'll say that nicely, though. Yeah. It'll be a nice way of saying that. Like, I love you, baby, but no. But not like right now. <laughs> Sometimes she'll jump in. She'll be excited. She'll be like, baby. And I'll be like, uh-huh. <laughs> like, I, I, I contact and I'm like, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Like, eye contact is like the last little bit of energy <laughs> I have to spare you, my dear. But I'm going to give you this eye yeah. contact. Mm. What a day, baby. If I never told you before, like, you get on my damn nerves. But I love you, man. I wouldn't trade you for anything on this world. Earth. <laughs> Spherical blue. Okay, call Atmospheric. Let's, okay. All right. Okay, inclusivity. <laughs> Whatever your belief is. Yeah, however you planetarily identify. But it's, it's I. I love you, man. And it's not just like the love, like I'm familiar with you or we spent enough time where I don't know life without you. So it's just like one of those type things. Like you're always trying to do better. And you're always trying to figure out how to make life for us better, how mm -hmm. to make life for me better. And you love me outside of just me being your husband. Like you love me as a person. You love me as a human. And um, that's not something I always saw in our relationship. It's always been there, though. And I, I haven't always seen that. Aww. But, um, man, I appreciate you. And just days like this, where we both tired, but we sitting in front of this audience of people who have a million things that they could be doing right now, but they somehow decided to sit here and look at us talk about our lives and our experiences. How lucky are we to be able to oh kick God. that, man? You're trying you to make know? me cry. That was so beautiful. I'm just, I'm, I'm saying, Guys. man. Hold on, let me show. All right, <laughs> the camera like to cut off. It did it before. You won't get me again, Sony A7 III. We just closed out the sit down talk, but I think the camera might have gone off before we did the snap. So here you go. Be well.